playoff games, the team scoring first has lost six of the seven games. Don't go anywhere. Primo pushes it ahead too far for Stevens. Kept inside the zone. Pandolfo had a second chance to clear and could not. All alone in front was Primo, but a pass was behind him. Could not handle, and it's cleared down the ice. Pushed ahead for Yager. Trying to connect with Stevens. Rafalski stepped up on him nicely. Rolled around the boards. Here's Yager at the point. Makes the move. Yager lets it go. And it's deflected off a jersey stick and into the crowd. Well, Yager continues to show that kind of jump. Marty Brodeur is going to go ha have to go back to late February when he felt like he turned something around here in a game against the Pittsburgh Penguins. He made this unbelievable save on Yager. The rebound came out to Mario. Mario thought he had a goal for sure, but he punched out the far pad. And he talked openly before the series started about this sequence of saves against two great players like that. And certainly, it's saves like that that you keep in your mind in, in terms of visualization and positive thoughts. And I talked to Marty today and, and asked him, is it fair to compare you to Ken Dryden? And, and in his situation in the mid-70s, when he didn't face a lot of shots, but he had to make that one or two saves per game that could turn the momentum of the game around. And he said, that's very, very fair. It's extremely similar. Another way to compare Brodeur to Dryden is career playoff shutouts. They each have 10. Tied for eighth on the all-time list. Patrick Waugh, the leader, with 17. Waugh played great last night, or what? We talked about Patrick, too, wow. today to me. So you see all the shots he got early? See those shots? <laughs> Penguins are on side. Shots early, shots in the middle, and shots late. Who's firing 60 at him last night? Here's Lemieux setting up shot behind the net. He'll go back to the point for his old buddy, Bergevin. Let's it go. Shot stop by Brodeur. It almost looked like he was hurt on that shot, the way he ducked his head down. As players get together, and penalties will be handed out. Good work down low that results in a Mark Bergevin shot. No word. Nothing. 18 Pittsburgh minor penalty roughing. Joseph Varanek in front of the net. Alexander Mogilny, Nemchinov, and Holik were on the ice for that sequence. Cross-check in front there by Kenny Danico on Varanek. And then Varanek came right in. I think he might have thought that it was Bobby Holik that did it, so he went right at Bobby Holik. He got the wrong guy. It was Danico that actually cross-checked him in the back before that. Oh, and then there's that shot. Big shot there to the throat, and the referee, Koharski, already got him. He says, I got one, and it was Joseph Varanek. See the work down low by the Penguins? Everybody flooded down low. I mean, they took away the low part, and Mark Bergman was wide open there. So obviously, the respect you have to show with Mario Lemieux down behind the net. Varanek, the roughing penalty at 11.49, first power play of the night for the New Jersey Devils. Devils had scored in seven consecutive playoff games on the power play prior to game two when they were flanked. I think when penalty killing was outstanding, keeping the Devils 0 for 5 on the power play in the 4-2 loss. Eight minutes left, period number one. one nothing New Jersey. And the Brian Rafalski goal, a pretty setup from Alexander McGilmey. Good play to get it back to the point. Arnold goes across. Shot tip in front. Elias was bumped by Boogner right into Johan Hedberg. Contact players go down. The puck is clear of the center. And the Devils come right back. Here's Elias now. Elias is swung around by Boogner, and he's going to go. And the Penguins will be shorthanded two men for a minute 23. Well, he's on Pittsburgh. Two minutes holding. Boogner and the Pittsburgh Penguins fell asleep a little bit in the middle of the ice. And I tell you what, the, just the speed of the New Jersey Devils is something you got to be careful. Oh boy, big line change on the left-hand side at the same time in which the defenseman of the Devils had possession of the puck. So an ill-advised time to change it up. You see Boogner's looking around and it's not closed off. There's room in the middle and he lets go of his stick. And by letting go of his stick and wrapping his arm around with Elias going down, that's where the referee makes the call. Five on three power play for a minute and 23 seconds. Boogner for holding at 12.25. The Devils, the number one power play unit in the regular season. They had the fewest opportunities on the power play. And we're number one here. We'll see what they do with a two-man advantage. Here's Rafalski now, looking to set it up. Ryan Rafalski, here's side for Arnett. Fires and scores! Jason Arnett scores the goal, making it 2 nothing New Jersey. And now the five on four power play. Well, Randy 
McKay in front of the net. And he's getting in the way of Johan Hedberg. And then Hedberg has to contend with the hard shot of Jason Arnott. He can fire it as hard as anybody in this league, I would venture to say. All the play goes towards the left. Now you watch the right side of your screen. That's where Jason Arnott's going to come in. He got good wood on this, but Johan Hedberg is not happy with the end result. Short side shot went underneath him. And he was extremely frustrated afterwards. Jason Arnott's shot was nice and hard. But Randy McKay was not in his way. Randy McKay had moved out of the way. I liked the way in which the point man, everybody moved over towards the right. Mario Lemieux had to shift over towards the right, and then the play came back to the left side of the ice, which is where Jason Arnott was. Arnott gets his first point of the series, making it 2-0 New Jersey. And again, the power play continues on. They cash in on the 5-on-3, and here we'll see what they do on the 5-on-4. Gomez trying to beat Moran. Can't do it that time. Gomez will get a second chance now. Gomez for McGillney, trying to go back door to slip it through to McKay, who was alone momentarily, but the pass never made it across. And it's cleared down if Rodor will help his own cause. Finds Scott Stevens. Stevens for Gomez, the shot blocker down by Hedberg. Back to the point. Here's Stevens again. Trying to make the pass. Off Straka, second chance. Bergevin picks it up. And the Penguins break back the other way. The Penguins are offside. Trying to kill it off at the New Jersey blue line with 57 seconds left in the New Jersey power play. Our Bud Light Stanley Cup summary. We mentioned the Blues and their 60 shots on goal last night. The Abs just one and three in overtime games this postseason. And congratulations to Martin Brodeur, 13th goalie all time to reach 100 playoff games. This is 99th playoff start. Third goalie. Patrick Waddle at 27, Grant Beer at the age of 28. Shot around the boards. Sikora will get to it. Cross for Arnott. Try it again. Shot blocked. Puck loose. Kovalev gets to it and just able to clear. Arnott from Rafalski. Power play goal in a five on three at 12.37. Brian Rafalski already has got a pair of points tonight. The Devils a 2 0 lead over the Penguins. 28 seconds left on the Buchner minor. Again, if you're just joining us, the Penguins without the offense of Robert Lang and the defense of Darius Kasparaitis. Here's Rafalski. He's got the hot hand early. Gets the return feed. Finds Arnett. For Rafalski, not that hot that time. He couldn't handle the pass, and it's clear to center. Here's Elliott trying to slip through. Got a nice feed from Shapiro. Polik finishes his. You couldn't get to it. That allows the Devils to. Jersey loss. Here's Kovalev. Avoids one hit. That'll do it. The horn sound and ending period number one. Brian Rafalski on the board. So too is Jason Arnott. But it's only because of Johan Hedberg's fine play. It's only two to nothing. John and Barry, back to you. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. And this is where I take my usual yearly shot at the NBA. Because whistle. Roman Turk just can't finish the puck when it gets near that glove it bounces off it bounces away it bounces to one of the players we're seeing it all playoffs long we saw it against San Jose we saw it against Dallas and we're seeing it now uh, against the Avalanche and again uh, basically in Europe all you use your hands for is eating and uh, in, in North America you go out and have a catch with your dad in Europe you go out and have a kick with your dad it's just not paying off Roman's got to keep that puck away from his catching glove get it into the corner because anytime it touches that glove it drops right in front of him if I'm the Avalanche I go to the net as hard as I can every time it goes near that catching glove because dollars to donuts that thing drops right down in front of them and you'll have a juicy rebound if you go to the net hard yeah, or even take it to the next level and just shoot everything straight towards the glove Roma Turk did come out with the victory just the same and so st louis now trails only two to one chris Parker, 252 into the second well the one guy they might want to keep their eye on is number 68 80, excuse me number 89 alexander mcgillney through the middle of the ice that's the good save by Johan Hedberg. Now, quick little turnover in transition. Scott Stevens right on the tape to number 89 again. Streak it in beyond the defenseman of the Pittsburgh Penguins. And this guy scored 76 goals one year. Could probably score 76 goals 
you know, in, in most years, the game has changed, so that might be over-exaggerated, but he is a natural sniper. And I know he's had problems scoring goals, and maybe his confidence has wavered, but given the chances like this, and he's going to connect. There's no doubt about that. Bergevin is back to the ice. That was 92-93 when McGillney had 76 goals. This season, he had 43 goals, 40 assists, 83 points. That's his best season since back in 95-96 with Vancouver. That was a 55-goal, 107-point campaign. He's only the fourth player in Devils history to score 40-plus goals in a year. They haven't had individual high-scoring players in their organization. But he only played four minutes and 18 seconds of the first period. Three shots on goal. And look at the quality of the shots on goal. You get the sense, though, right? He's just oh, he two away no. from, you know, from a hat trick kind of performance. I talked to Johan Hedberg this morning about Mogilny, and he really felt that Mogilny was trying to go high glove the entire game. Mogilny has changed that up in this game, trying to go between the legs. Quick shot from Veranic off the faceoff. Brodeur has the answer to that, and it's chipped out. Well, we mentioned that earlier in the game, Seven shots in game number two, McGillney. Did he miss the net on four of the seven? Clearly going for a specific spot, as you point out. Off Danico, right back to Morosov. Those two will go to the corner. Morosov trying to center for Lemieux. Stevens and Lemieux go to the corner. And Elias comes away with it. Pushes it out to center. Aren't it there? Lalkin in the other way. Here's Goranek trying to break through. It's tied up. What a defensive play by the outstanding offensive player, Patrick Elias from Jersey. All because of Lalkin and staying up in the neutral zone, and he was able to make the play between the red line and the blue line, and then pass it up ice and, and get the turn and transition going. Two line pass is the reason for the whistle. And the reason for the game track to give you more information up to the second as this game progresses. We'll expand on that too. In the first period, the New Jersey Devils were only 39% on faceoffs, while the Pittsburgh Penguins, a team that has been really inconsistent in that area, 61%. Mario was real solid at 69%. Lost only four draws in the opening 20 minutes. Penguins had only. One player have a winning record in face-offs in game number two, Penn. Alex Kovala, he went 1-0. Oh. He took one face-off. He's the only player on the Penguins with a winning record in face-offs in game number two, an area of concern. Holik, before McKinley, couldn't handle it that time. Milan Kraft does, and spins in a tight circle the other way. Well, Dura thought about it, and thought better of it. Let Rafalski play. Turnover! Here's Rodina. Let's it go! Save Brodor! And the rebounder of Falski. And that's kind of the story. As it's touched offside, they're going to call it intentional, I think, and bring it down on the Pittsburgh end. When the, when the Penguins get a chance, they get one chance. There is no second chance against Martin Brodor. No, Jan Herdina, you've mentioned that he struggled offensively, but he makes a wise decision here. He takes the puck and goes to the middle of the ice. After he makes this move on Mogilny, he actually has time to move in a little bit further. And he let a little wrist shot right here go, and there's no traffic in front of Martin Brodor. who has been very quick at getting down into the butterfly. Brian Rafalski was very quick to jump on that rebound. Face off to the right of Hedberg. Well, the Penguins able to get to it. Good win there. Hans Janssen picks up the loose puck. He'll reverse. Too far for Puka to get to it. Gomez and Puka go down together. Little one touch pass. Quick shot. And it looked like a stick save by Hedberg. Randy McKay got enough of it on goal. Loose puck in the corner, there's McKay. Johnson, they go for it. Centering feet for everyone. And Pittsburgh will come away with Alex Kovalev. Kovalev shot from the angle, stop the hot door. And the rebound right back to Straka. He'll reverse it down low for Kovalev. Tried to make a spinning move on Niedermeyer, didn't buy it. Edwinson, rare good board checking and some pressure here. Straka trying to spin away. One arms it for Kovalev. Kovalev taken down by White. Kovalev again. No time or space for the crafty Penguins. Kovalev, one arm into the corner. Here's Straka with Gomez all over him. Puts him down. Kovalev went to play the body. Now plays the clock. Put it in the state to Gomez. He'll slap it around. Off the referee. And that allows the Devils to get to it. They do more than just clear. Here's a chance. The case shot right on. And Hedberg to save, and he'll hang on. 
That gives us a chance to tell you about tomorrow night's action. The St. Louis Blues will try to build on last night's thrilling double overtime victory. They looked even their series in game four of the Western Conference Final against the Avs. Exclusive coverage begins 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. We'll be right here on ESPN. How about that game last night? As that game went on and on, it just got stronger and stronger. This is Yell's chance to win it. Oh, boy, goes off the bottom of the stick. And here's the game winner in overtime, the second overtime session. A turnover in the neutral zone. The St. Louis Blues pounce on that. And Pierre Turgeon makes a slick play right over to Scotty Young, who rips it between the arm and the body of goaltender Patrick Waugh. That was the 60th shot on Patrick Waugh. Incredible goaltending performance by the future Hall of Famer. It was a great theater last night. Oh, Tremendous got better and better, didn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. All the penalties early took a little bit of the flow away, and then as it got on, boy, oh boy. Stevenson went out of his way to wreck Moran, a pair of 24. Here's Maddox, back to the point. A Volsky quick shot, and a quick repaired save by Hedberg. Yager paid the price to make the clearing pass, and the Devils get right to it and shoot in. Lalkin in his back door again. Turner Stevenson will celebrate a birthday tomorrow. He was out of the lineup in game two. Maybe an early birthday gift getting back in the lineup here tonight. Replacing Bob Corkum in the New Jersey lineup. Turnovers are incredible for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Incredible. Kovalev popping up inside his own zone there. I mean, Kevin Stevens was so sure on the puck a lot of times. Plays the safe route up the boards. He played it in the middle and just that little play. And the New Jersey Devils, they're on their toes. They're reading and reacting to every giveaway. Playing by Yacht. Of course, he keeps it in. Then makes the pass. Barron shot. Tip shot. It is stopped by Brodeur. And here's Sikora breaking back the other way. Three on two, New Jersey. Elias Shimmer that try to go back to Manning. And it was broken up. And the Penguins counter. A little transition game for Pittsburgh. What a move. Shot to the angle. It is stopped by Martin Brodeur. Oh. Mario Lemieux showed it to you all there. Except for finishing. Jersey Devils broken up cleanly by the stick work of Mark Bergevin and look what happens up the ice. Mario Lemieux for one of the few times has the puck with speed. Makes a nifty move here on the veteran Scott Stevens. Gave him the old inside outside move and then try to beat Martin Brodeur between the legs or short side. The key there was Yager giving him the pass ahead so he had speed going through the neutral zone. Stevens on it. Lemieux could not get to him. Mario Lemieux comes into tonight's action second in playoff scoring. 16 points. Milan Haiti for Colorado has 19 to lead the National Hockey League. Wrapped around the boards, far side. Morosov all sorts of time. And they'll move it ahead. Here's Moranic. He's had some jump tonight. Joseph Moranic will backhand it in. Rodor will stick it around the boards. Kept it at the point momentarily. On it. Stood up by Moranic, but able to make the pass for Elias. Patrick Elias looking for Arnett. Ian Bergman going to the corner. Sakura comes over to help out. Back to the point. Here's Stevens. Let's it go. Blocked out the defense, and it's clear. Scott Stevens has a three-game point score. Coming into action tonight. Danico or Stevens, one of the two, got the buck. Because of that icing, they'll bring it back down to the Pittsburgh end. Well, the New Jersey Devils, I know, are going to be aware of what happened in game number two. I'm sure their focus are on the little things that they've done well in this game for Larry Robinson, keeping the puck up the board, not in the middle of the ice when you're in the neutral zone and you're in a, a position in which it's not 100%. Quick tempo. We talked about moving the puck up a little quicker from the D to the forwards and having everybody as a, as a one-man unit a little bit tighter so there's not such a large gap in between the forwards and the defensemen. So far, it's going along pretty, pretty well for them, and I like the way Marty Brodeur is in that net. He just looks so much more assertive in this game than he had in the first two games. Darren, this is right about that time when Pittsburgh started their comeback. 9-20 of uh, the second period. Morosov started it off for Pittsburgh. First three goals in a six-and-a-half-minute span. Here's Kraft now. Down low for Yager. Good little poke check by Holik to knock it away. Yager comes over. Back to the point. Moran has vacated the area. And here's Niedermeyer. He's swept smooth skating Niedermeyer. Fires. Hedberg the same. Here's McGillney. He's got a second to look at it. The centering feed was blocked by Hedberg. Holik backhander. And a stop by Hedberg. And he'll hang on. Gives us an opportunity to share with you the Nextel League leaders. 
We mentioned Mario Lemieux being second in playoff points, but when you're looking at playoff goals, the leader is Chris Drury of Colorado. It's Cora and Sackett close behind. Well, let's take a closer look there at our next tell league leaders and focus in on Peter Sikora and the hard shot that he has. I know goaltender Johan Hedlund has been concerned with the shooting of Sikora. This is a rebound attempt, though, so not a clean shot. It was a backhander off the, off the rebound. This is a cross ice up in game one. Perfect pass by Elias. This is the kind of shot I'm talking about that you have to be aware of. Then here in a situation going shorthanded between the legs and underneath Johan Hedberg. Sakura comes in with a six-game point scoring streak. Five goals, ten points in those six games. He's puck in the corner. Pittsburgh gets to it. Colin White jumps back in a position to make the play for New Jersey. Randy McKay has put it off the board, right back into the Pittsburgh game. Hedberg swings it away from Gomez. And the Penguins come out to center. Cross ice pass tape to take the Strzok. They'll hit the break, so it's the curl away for Jack. Centering feed right to New Jersey. Gomez on it. Through everyone, He's trying to get it back to McKay. Never got through. Now the board's in and out. Penguins trying to get some speed going with Kovalev. The shoot is rolling eight for Bay. For Bay, first point of the postseason in game number two. The game winning goal. And now Rene Corbett's got a lot of responsibility. He's been in the middle, not on every shift. They're kind of mixing Primo. Even Mario had a shift with this line here with Kovalev and Straka. Trying to replace Robert Lang is just a difficult thing. A right-handed sentiment that these players have been used to all season long. It has been there. And before Mario, it was obviously their best line. And even in times when Mario came back, it was their best line. That's how good of a line they've been. Here's Stevenson now. His pass back to the point, picked off by Primo. Out ahead for Dan Lockhuter. O'Donnell breaks up the play, and the Devils come away. Slow development, three on two. Now it develops, Madden the shot. And the arm saved by Hedl. Oh, big hit there by Stevenson. Oh, boy. He's had a number of those tonight. Stevenson kicked a lot of life into the Devils. Three or four big hits already, as we just passed the midway point of the game. Line passes a dandy for Elliott. Let's it go. Nearly off the defenseman and in, and Hedberg moving across. Pass back to the point. Danico comes over to get to it. Finds Stevens. Out at center. Elias couldn't get out of his skates. Here's Lemieux. Onside. Sapporo got the stick up high on Lemieux. And a penalty coming up. Mario trying to cut over to the right side across the blue line. And inadvertently, Sapporo clipped him. Going to be a minor penalty. Big hit by Turner Stevenson in the offensive zone on Ian Moran. Center of the ice and Sikora's stick came up. Man, oh man. It, it, I thought at first he was trying to get his stick between the, underneath the shaft of the stick to lift it up, but it really wasn't close. Minor penalty for high sticking. Third power play of the night. Pivotal point in the hockey game. Absolutely 100%. You mentioned it before. It's about the similar time as Pittsburgh getting back in the last game, they were actually short-handed on that key goal by Morozov. Now they're on the power play. Then even crazier, that's got a couple of even strength goals against the Devils. Here's Yager. Center oh. off the, just on the backhand of Lemieux. Couldn't get it to the forehand. Rolled off the tip of his blade on the backhand. Here's Strzok now. Trying to make the move away from Maddie. He's chopped at. Cross ice pass. Lemieux, top of the circle. Stevens in front of the net. Far side, try to get Ferenc working with it. Yager tried to go back to Ferenc, could not. To the corner, Stevens will get to it first. Here's Lemieux now, directing traffic. Stevens to the front, he's dumped by Danico. Ferenc thought about it, lets it go. And it's deflected in the corner. Stevens gets to it, can't clear. Pandolfo, a second chance, able to clear. Boy, did they ever do a good job. Boy, Madden and Pandolfo on the high, on the high part of the penalty killing unit. They stayed up high and they put some pressure on the point man. They didn't give Pittsburgh much room, although they had good puck possession. It was all on the perimeter. Shot around the boards and out of play and into the crowd. Just offensively, the Penguins miss Robert Lang. Defensively, they miss Darius Kasparitis. Well, they do. They certainly do. They miss his presence. 
And by watching him in the morning skating, you saw him with the shorts on, kind of a new way of testing out the foot. There's the left foot, there's the broken bone. Said it's in the toes, it, I mean, uh, you're not gonna disclose exactly what, what bone it is. And trust me, it's a lot more bloated than even that camera look was. But uh, it looks like it's right in the, on the outside of that foot. Back to the point now. Johnson trying to keep it in deeper. Here's Kovalev. Lemieux to the front of the net in the high slot area. Trying to go back to it. Alalkinen could not connect. Freeland able to get it away. Two on one shorthanded. Eliash oh, got it through to Nina Meyer and it rolled off his stick. Couldn't get the shot on goal. That's their seventh odd man break in this hockey game and that's shorthanded. Rosoff and Lemieux. They lose to Freeland the other way. Madden's on it. You hear the countdown, and Madden just put one off the crossbar. That snuck behind Hedberg, who might want to cover up and regroup right now. Penalty is over. Devil's able to kill it off back to five aside. I talked to Johan Hedberg about his glove today, and he said he's been trying to work on getting that glove a little bit higher. He holds it right on his waist. It's kind of a classic position. There are times when it drags a little bit too low. This shot by Madden beat him high to the glove side and clank right off the bar and up and over. And it was just a wrister. I mean, it was a good wrister by Madden. Nice sauce. Oh, right on the joint of the crossbar that meets the post. Let's listen in. Not much room there either, as you can hear it playing off the post, but not much room at all. But it shows you a little bit about the position of the glove and why he said he was working on that position a little bit more. Long shot. Stick to side. Edward's been the, maybe the first star of this game tonight. Oh, there's no doubt. 25-14 with the shots on goal in favor of the visiting New Jersey Devils. Bergevin will look to calm things down. No, he's giving them a he's giving them life. He's giving them an opportunity. We know the Penguins. We know they can lose 58 minutes of hockey game and win two and win. But right now they can ill afford to go down by three against this New Jersey squad. Rafalski bouncing puck and the Penguins were offside. As Stevens brought it across. 633 left in the second. But well, one thing that could pose to be a, a bit of a problem for the Pittsburgh Penguins is Muriel Lemieux's annual golf tournament. It's raised almost two and a half million dollars to go towards research medically. And it is held at the Club of Nevillewood in Collier Township. It's the main fundraiser for the Muriel Lemieux Foundation Medical Research for Cancer Neonatal. Last year's winner was Danny Quinn. $40,000 paycheck to Danny Quinn as Muriel presented that to him. Danny kindly put $20,000 back into the foundation and Natalie Lemieux, you see Austin right there. Hey, Austin. Oh, he enjoys that time. And a good picture of Mario and his son, Austin. And, of course, that's Mario Lemieux would just, more than anything else, to experience lifting the Stanley Cup and having little Austin involved in that it would be something that would be truly special. More special than anything I could think of in the entire world when you can share that with your kids. And especially, that what's more important is he was born prematurely. And the neonatal care of the foundation that's where a lot of that money goes so obviously very good and by the way Danny Quinn made the uh, first qualifying cut to the US Open as an amateur and he's got to go through I think another round better golfer or hockey player Danny Quinn He's a first rounder in hockey, and uh, I would say hockey player first. But right now, there's no doubt he's an unbelievable <laughs> golfer. golfer. You bet he is. And Quinn for the Pittsburgh Penguin. Back behind the boards, Moran was tied up nicely by McGillney. Good checking work by Alexander McGillney. McGillney threw a couple of big hits in game two. On it, try to fire the one timer. Yager gets to it. Here's Verdina. Just softly in, and Niedermeyer pushes it right back out. Penguins had to wait. Laufkin was caught deep inside the zone. That'll try to flip in softly. Soft enough that there will be no icing. Here's Niedermeyer. You mentioned Mogilny flying. Well, from a, from a standpoint, from the coaching standpoint of the New Jersey Devils, Larry Robinson sees that. He's been double shifted several times here in the second period. Hedberg is back for it. Wrapped around the boards. And Lemieux, cross ice. Rosoff will shoot it in. Brought down by Bredor. Danico swings it around and all the way down. No ice in call here either. Pens get to it. Out ahead, Morosoff again. Loses. 
to Scott Stevens. Pretty good pinch by Pittsburgh. They didn't keep the puck in. But Bugner went out of his way to take his man out of the play. Let's see if it costs the Penguins. Turnaround shot, and the goaltender, Hedberg, is slammed into the post and was knocked in by his own defenseman there. Um, Johnson Couture had some help. It remains 2-0 New Jersey. City. The Penguins and Devils battling for last place in 83-84, knowing the number one pick overall would be that man, Mario Lemieux. I know there are some in the Devils organization who feel the Penguins didn't play as hard as they could have down the stretch to make sure they got Mario in a Pittsburgh uniform. And they had a battle. I mean a battle, the final 10 games. And I guess the Penguins won the battle because they finished dead last. And that earned them number 66. Yeah, Tommy McPhee was the coach then, and he said he still to this day will walk through the, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the mezzanine areas, the concourse areas. People still yell at him for that, for winning late. And what's the bottom line in this sport? Winning hot, winning, Absolutely. winning, giving it your best effort at all times. I played against Miro Lemieux in the Memorial Cup in 84, Steve. And uh, he lit you up like a Christmas tree? Well, he scored only one goal. <laughs> it was against me, but there was something awfully special, and uh, everybody's known that since, uh, since the day he laced up skates the first time. There's no doubt about that. He beat you once, you robbed him, what, 10, 12 times? <laughs> Flash the glove at him. Here's a chance. Backhander is fanned on Arnett. Good effort while he was being taken down. Here's Shakura trying to get it through. Eliash was crushed into the boards, and the Penguins look to break back the other way. And it crossed the line. Kovalev couldn't do anything with it. Laukinen on it. Look out as Eliash runs into Laukinen. Eliash, the player who was taken down. That's the worst of that experience. Taking nothing away from the sentiment there, replacing Robert Lang, but these two wingers don't seem nearly as effective, nearly as effective nor confident when making a play offensively. This Lang injury is something of a surprise. There was no word of it today. Didn't skate today, but a number of the Penguins that didn't skate in the morning skate. That shot deflected wide. On path on it, stolen by O'Donnell and cleared. We know about Kasparitis' injury, but didn't find out until by 40 minutes prior to game time, there was the possibility that Robert Lang would not play. Then he skated in pregame warm-up. It was a late scratch in the Pittsburgh lineup. I wonder if he could skate well enough to play in free and to skate the pregame. How long this might keep him out? Is it just one game or is it more? The same question for Kasparitis, though. He's listed out indefinitely. I'm just going to think that this is not yet a desperate situation. And I think Kasparitis, he did not want to address and then only be playing eight or nine minutes and have to leave the game and leave this team shorthanded defensively. It was a wild finish in game three of the Western Conference Finals. The Blues survived a gutsy double overtime win. Now the battle for the most coveted trophy in sports gets even tougher. Avalanche Blues, game four tomorrow at seven on ESPN. Which, you know, I, I know you've been wanting to buy a Cessna for the Pang family. Yeah. This would be a good time. Get us to St. Louis in a hurry. It would be a good time. Maybe we can borrow Alexei Kovalev. <laughs> He's a high-flying winger. That... He's not going to fly the plane, though, Kovalev. Is he? Yeah, he does. He's a captain. He's a guy. He does the work. A pilot for us, though. Here's new centering feet. Broke it up and cleared out to center. Matt will pick it up for New Jersey. So the Cessna for the Pang family is a few years away. Centering feed, Madden rips one, stopped by Hedberg. The top of his crease. Madden puts his man down. And here's Lemieux, starting it out for Morosa. Stepped up high on Lemieux, and the crowd wanted a penalty. And no indication one is coming. Joe Micheletti. Steve, you and Darren have been talking in this game about Pittsburgh and how they're playing defensively. A lot of the mistakes they've been making and why the shots are 25-14 at this time and with all the scoring chances going on the New Jersey side. Well, in tonight's spotlight, we're going to talk about and show you some of what is happening. Here's early on. Look at Pittsburgh making a line change, and that's Alexander McGillney coming off the bench. Look at the middle of the ice. Wide open. Gets the puck, walks in, gets a scoring chance, and then again later on. Another bad line change. There's where the puck is. Look at all those players going to the bench. And that's Scott Gomez coming late out of the zone. Again, look at the middle. Wide open. And Scott Gomez draws a penalty on that one. Defensively, Pittsburgh has not been sharp in this game. 
They'll get another chance to play some defense here as McGilvey rips one. Deflected off Bergman into the corner. Kovalev deep in his own zone. Back for Colin White. Long shot. Blocker to side by Hedberg. Goes up the near side. The Schnaka. Devils aren't cheating tonight. They talked about they got caught cheating in game two. White on it there. And he can't get to it. And Moran is back at center. Maybe the forwards were leaving their own zone a little too early in game number two. You don't see that tonight. Even with the 2 nothing lead, that was such a problem in game two. All right. Trying to work around Ian Moran. Back behind the net. Here's McGilvey. Centering feed only Laukinen is there for Pittsburgh. And he'll make the soft pass. Out ahead. Straka. And he's trying to set up here and can't do anything. Scott Stevens was in the area, but he was not the player with the big bump. As icing is called. We have yet to see the typical Scott Stevens big hit in this series. No, not, not much time. I mean, the, the, the skilled players of, of Pittsburgh are such slick east-west stick handlers. Their head's up all the way. There's six world-class hockey players up front. And Kovalev, actually, he's shaken up with that situation. But Kovalev trying to go through, I believe there was four red jerseys there. And might have caught him right in the midsection. Maybe lost his breath a little bit. But it looked like everything was okay for the Pittsburgh Penguins. And then when Kovalev got, got the puck here, stop it here, guys. Here we go. We got a two on three, and then there's going to be a little bit of help as well. Once he crosses the blue line, there's help. There's there. That's where he runs into it, right there. Right at the blue line. Four red jerseys right there. Elias got his shoulder and his helmet right in the midsection of Alexei Kovalev. And that might have caught him by surprise. And he went to the bench slowly. His head is still down as he is sitting on the bench. Shot from the point, got through, stopped by Brodor. Here's Yager again showing off the strength, like with one arm tied behind his back. Look at that. Puts down the devil defender Lefowski and hangs onto the puck. Backhand pass across. Long shot stopped through traffic and Brodor will hang on. Lemieux was trying to tip it home. Another good effort by Yarmir Yager and more appreciation shown by this crowd. Well, you get the feeling if they can keep this a 2-0 deficit that maybe in the third period, I, you know, they're going to shorten that bench up. And you, you can be sure that Mario and, and Yarmer will spend more time on the ice together than only the two even strength shifts that I, that, that I believe that we've seen in this hockey game so far. You mentioned the strength. That tells me that Yager looks pretty darn healthy. I mean, he is shrugging people off. He's taking some hits. Mario's in front of the net getting the once over there from Scott Stevens, trying to battle it in there and get a rebound. Whistled out, two-line pass. Coming up, the Dodge Different intermission report. Get you back to John and Barry, all the latest, to look at the Blues role players. So important this time of year, including Mike Eastwood. Look at the NBA playoffs. And it's all coming up on the Dodge Different intermission report. 32.6 seconds away. Kovalev, you might recall, was on the receive the other end of a hard hit in the series against Buffalo. Remember, he laid out Alexei Zhitnik yeah. of the Sabres for the blue line. And in game two, he had a really good hit, too, on Scotty Gomez through the middle of the ice. And he's a powerful guy. He's 6'1". He's 217 pounds. He's thick. Shot to the corner. Left side of Brodeur. Stevens oh. back for it. Icing will be called. 24.3 seconds left here in the second. And it'll be a key faceoff for the Pittsburgh Penguins. I tell you, their goaltender has weathered the storm, and Ivan Halink and the coaching staff have got to thank their rookie netminder in goal. He, he's really been something special again. He never quits this kid. I mean, he really doesn't. He doesn't have that defeatist attitude. And Ivan Halinka and the Pittsburgh Penguins have certainly identified with that. In 1971, a 23-year-old Ken Dryden stepped in for the Montreal Canadiens, went 12-8, and and won the Conn Smythe Trophy. Montreal upset Boston and then beat Chicago in seven games in the Stanley Cup Finals. And don't forget, Dryden only made six starts in the regular season that year. People keep waiting for Hedberg to fall apart. It just does not appear like it's going to happen every round. Centered. Penguins get to it. They'll flip it out with 15 seconds left. They said, hey, wait till he gets to the playoffs and see what kind of goal he is. Wait till he gets into the second round of the playoffs. Here he is in the third round. No side. Lemieux centering feed. And it's broken up by Sakura, and that will do it. The horn sounds ending period number two. With him, gets this crown going. This time wisely, Hedberg picks up the fat part of the broken 
step. Here's Kovalev now. Rips one trying to pick the far side and couldn't hit the target. And the rebound carries all the way back down to the Pittsburgh end. And remember, a player can take this handoff from the bench on Pittsburgh bench and hand a, a new stick, a fresh stick, over to the goaltender, Johan Hedberg. Such an obscure play. What are the odds on it happening twice in three games? And now he's got to play the puck with a mini stick. Played it pretty well. Let's see if the Devils will get a shot on goal with Brodeur missing the top portion of his well, stick. Rather, Hedberg missing the top portion of his stick. Somebody on the bench. I mean, the backup, they should know this by now after experience in the last game. Hand the stick off to somebody on the ice and go give it to him. That's amazing. And the backup goalie, John Sebastian Obey, really should be communicating that to somebody on the bench at this point. Let's see if it burns the Penguins. Pittsburgh on it now. Niedermeyer was one on four. There we go. Karanik. There's the handoff. Speed goal. There's the handoff by Morozov now. Moranek back behind the net. Some sarcastic cheers from the home crowd. And Hedberg finally has a complete stick. Here's Freeland on it. And they're offside, and we get a whistle. Too many men on the ice. Oh, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, Morozov came off the bench, grabbed the stick, or did he did he skate from the ice and go to the bench, pick up the stick on the handoff, brought it in. Oh, there's too many men on the ice. And, and then Morozov went right over to the bench and, and jumped off. So let's keep stop it right here, guys, if we can. Let's let's just so one, two, three, four, five. And Morozov was right up here. Six guys there. And you see on the screen with the chain, but the change was fine, so that wouldn't be the case on that particular sequence. But Morozov hopped over the boards with the stick and then handed it off and then went back in a relay formation. Maybe he was thinking somebody was going to come off. Johnny Madden came in and made a nifty move to the short side, and again, Johan Hedberg with his belly on the ice and his right pad along the ice. He beat John Madden with a nice little move. Then he breaks the stick there and just snaps the very weak. It's an all-wooden stick, and it's very weak where the paddle, the fat paddle, and the shaft join from our Southwest Airlines goal cam. It's going to happen right there. It got caught on the side of the net, and it snapped off quickly. There is no penalty. They announced in the building premature substitution, so they just whistle it dead and face off okay. the center ice. So that replay that we did show, this does clarify, that replay that we did show, there's a five-foot buffer that you have. They obviously extended that, and because it wasn't part of the play, that's where you get that premature substitution. So good work, guys, in figuring that out. I really thought Morosov had come off the bench, and there was still, you know, five guys on. Well, it took him a long time anyway to get that stick to the goaltender. An awful long time. But to see that happen two times in three games, rather odd. Yeah, rather odd is right. Here's a handoff. Rosov jumps off. Here he goes. Looks by. Good handoff. I thought the cheers were from Matt when you said sarcastic cheers. I thought it was because they finally got a stick over to Johan Hedberg. Me too. Penguin fans looking for something to cheer here tonight. Find their pins all excited about them at home now. After getting a big win in New Jersey, the come from behind win. And all of a sudden, we're not able to do anything offensively tonight. Again, no Robert Lang, no Darius Kasparitis. 3-0 in New Jersey. Not to take anything away from them. It's been a dominant effort by New Jersey in all three zones. Yeah, they have to be feeling really good about the way they played this game. I mean, it doesn't appear as if anybody's been really crushed. I mean, physically, it looks like they're going to have plenty of energy. Here's Emchinov and across the line. The Devils break in again, and a oh, check by Hedberg, and he is flattened. Looks like Holik got him. Hedberg loses his mask. He keeps the puck out, and then takes a look to see, and sure enough, it's 16 in red. Patrick Elias has made this a 3 nothing game. Favorite. He's thinking right now of his two-year-old daughter, Wilma, back home in Sweden, who's suffering from the chicken pox. Let's go down ice level. Joe Micheletti has got a special guest. Okay, thanks, Steve. Uh, Darius Gasparitis, uh, I'm sure, has been a difficult uh, night for you to watch this, hasn't it? 
Of course, you know, you don't want to see your team lose and uh, you want to go there and help the teammates play the good hockey game, but it's so frustrating, you know, you think you're going to do something, but you can't because you are hurt. From your perspective watching this game, what's gone wrong with your team tonight? I think we uh, we have no uh, flow to forecheck them. They're playing a great game right now, and we got to uh, change things maybe next game because I think we have no flow to uh, do anything against those D because, you know, last game we used the D, we, we, we went wide against them. We have no speed. We have to use our speed. I know you skated this morning. Do you anticipate playing Saturday afternoon? I try, try my best, and if I feel good, I'll be back. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Good luck. Thank you. Good question, Joe. Right on it as usual. Fox from Darius Kasparitis, the Penguins' leader in the postseason in hits, block shots, and penalty minutes. And they're clearly missing him tonight. And everything Kasparitis brings to the table. Back the other way. Nifty move by McKay. He beat one Penguin, Yanni Laukin, but could not beat the second, Ian Moran. Rafalski can't get to it. But Brodeur will swing it around, and it's all the way out of the zone. At center, Devils get to it. Fired off the sideboard for Gomez. Gomez is a freaking Breland who shoots in. He's pushed to the glass. Janssen picks up the loose puck for the Penguins. Getting late for Pittsburgh. Coming up on 12 minutes to play here in the third. And they trail 3-0. Barnett, Ferelia. Elias and Sakura both to keep their point scoring streaks alive. Johnson over for Bootner. Tried to head man. Can't get anything going through center. No speed to the neutral zone for Pittsburgh. Moranic. And again, it's off the devil's skate. That time it's Barnett. Bad clearing pass by Niedermeyer. A rare mistake by New Jersey in their own end, but it doesn't amount to anything with Pittsburgh. Last game, the Devils were guilty of three giveaway, giveaways by usually solid defensemen. Pittsburgh able to cash in on goal. They look so solid right now. They just look like a well-oiled machine going up against a team that doesn't nearly have enough depth to overcome injuries to the two key players that are out of the lineup, Kasparitis and Langan, and we're seeing the effects of that. The shifts are a little bit long. There hasn't been a quick up-tempo pace to the forward unit and the defense and certainly of the Pittsburgh Penguins. They have not been one unit, that's for sure. Elon Kraft takes a look. Centering feed broken up and Ferrens can't handle it. That has to be the frustrating part for New Jersey, but they can play this well after playing so poorly in game two. The inconsistency, not normally an attribute of a Stanley Cup champion or a defending Stanley Cup champion for that matter. We've seen inconsistency sprinkled throughout this postseason for New Jersey. First round, the second round here in the third round as well. Rattled around the board and all the way down. This will be icing as Moran is back for the touch. Let's go back to our National Hockey Night studios with John Saunders. Well, Steve, it's time for the 1-800-COLLECT great save of the week, and it's in overtime. Mr. Roman Turk, whoops, the on the L, had the gaping open net, held onto it too long, actually never lifted his head until he released it. That's your great save of the week. That it was, John, thank you. John Butchergrass joins Barry Melrose, Ray Ferraro coming up at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 Pacific over on ESPN2 for NHL tonight. A look at the Habs outstanding forward, Chris Drury, the top goal scorer in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Let's have a recap of the game. It was all post-game reaction and analysis. That save and a double overtime victory may do a world of wonder for the confidence of Roman Turek. Because after a struggling start, you've got to give them all a bunch of credit. On home ice, after the second goal, they battled back and battled back. Great team effort there by the St. Louis Blues, certainly. Wonderful hockey game. It'll be a wonderful game tomorrow night on ESPN. Looking forward to it. Great figures to be jumping. That's off for Dina and to the corner. Here's McGilney. Three on two, New Jersey. Here's Stevens leading the run. Gives it back to McGilney for the rocket. He was in the top position, and he fired it wide. Here's Yager now. Caught by McGilney, and rolls off Yager, sticking right to the devil. This is a situation where even though Alexander McGilney hasn't scored, it doesn't matter, because he's a threat every time out on the ice, and he's getting scoring chances. 
His frustration will subside, although I know natural goal scorers are obviously frustrated when they don't score. They expect to score every shot. He's, he and the rest of the Devils have got to be thrilled with the jump that he has had. Rosal centering feed behind Baranek. The Devils come right back the other way. Here's Freeland. Shot stopped by Hedberg as McKay tried to deflect it home. Just good give and goes, huh? Reading the play from New Jersey, give and go. They get the puck, they give it, they go to the open spots, they get it back. Good, just good everything. Damn, they just look so dominant tonight. Pittsburgh looks completely outmatched just about every facet of the game. Long shot from Gomez. Hedberg will hang on. 8.37 left here in the third. The Pens running out of time tonight. Fans have come out tonight all psyched up and nothing to cheer about now. Down 3-0. They have sold out the final 24 games here at Mellon Arena. Final 24 of the regular season. And every single playoff game to this point. Another capacity standing room only crowd. It looks like they'll be disappointed on their way out. Penguins get to it. Look to accomplish something. Maybe a moral victory at this point. Maybe win the final eight and a half minutes. Maybe get a good scoring chance. Would be something. This is ESPN's exclusive coverage. Game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. The Devils from eight minutes away from going up 2-1 in this series. Game four back here Saturday on ABC. The Penguins being blanked here at home. They have not been shut out in their last 89 home playoff games. You have to go back to April of 1975 against Glenn Chico Resch in that game. That was game seven. The Islanders beat the Penguins one to nothing. And of course, that's that famous series when the Islanders became only the second team joining only the old Maple Leafs to come back from down 3-0 to win a series. And that was game seven. Matt Chico is one of the real great guys in hockey, of course. Mike Emmerich and Chico Resch, the home announcers for the New Jersey Devils. But Chico, we found a way to sneak you in here, partner. <laughs> He's one of my favorite goalies growing up, too. Just love the way he played. Kind of a uh, little guy. <laughs> Mike Emmerich is in the building as well, broadcasting on the National Radio Call. The National Hockey League. Along with Ed Olchuk, the announcer for the <laughs> Pittsburgh Penguins on their television broadcast. Plenty of crossover in the building. Speaking of crossover, the Penguins were shut out only once in this regular season. Guess who? The Devils got it. Shot, quick little shot from Sakura is stopped by Johan Hedberg as the Penguins come away. That was the first time in 100 years that two players scored four goals in the same game. That's John four. Madden and Randy McKay. 9 nothing was the final in that game, October 28th. The only time the Penguins were shut out, and that was to be used to the Jersey Devils. Yeah, well, Martin Brodeur, although he hasn't been tested an awful lot, he's faced 16 shots. I thought he looked pretty sound. He got down to the butterfly. The Pittsburgh Penguins, look like they were trying to go between their legs because they had success. But they had success in game two on bouncing pucks going between his legs. These are different situations, and that's why I think as a shooter, you can't just get it in your head. Every time I go in on something, I'm just going to fire it there all the time. Remember, Rene Corbet's goal was kind of a half volley. The puck was bouncing like crazy, and it snapped it by him, got him by surprise. Uh, a couple of quick shots that found its way between the legs. Uh, the one-timer by Kovalev moving side to side. The chances that Pittsburgh's had in this game, he was stationary. So he was set, and then they tried going between his legs, and he was quick to go down there. Whistle again. They'll try to drop it one more time. I think, too, Steve, before I get to that next ball, let's go down to Joe Micheletti. Joe? Okay, Darren, thanks very much. You know, with the start of the game, we talked about some of the keys for Pittsburgh. One of those keys was to try and keep the puck away from Marty Brodeur. Has it happened? No, it hasn't. They wanted to do that so they could establish the four check in this game, and with just 16 shots on goal, that just simply hasn't been the case. And so with Marty Brodeur, he's handled the puck so well. Off the glass, worked on that often yesterday. See, back to you. All right, Joe, thank you. Coming into this game, Brodeur had turned it over 11 times, all by himself. 11 giveaways by Brodeur. This one rolls in on Hedberg. Hedberg had just five turnovers himself. 
but Rodor handles the puck so much more than Hedberg does at 22 more situations in which he was handling the puck that's coming into tonight. Yeah, and apologize, Joe, too. We thought they were going to have to reset the clock and buy you a little bit more time there, but good examples, too. You mentioned that right off the bat, and then Marty, at the beginning, got into the game by playing the puck, and I... I, I know that's an area that's easier said than done when we talk about keeping it away. Those soft cross-ice dump-ins are very difficult to manufacture. When you're going through the neutral zone, if, if two guys are standing still at the neutral in the blue line, and one guy dumps it in with speed, how are those two guys going to get to the puck anyway? And Marty is so good going, not only his backhand, uh, not only his forehead, but he's going to go to the backhand as well. Rodeur has not had much to do in this period. For those who think we're being too harsh on the Penguins, we sort of joked about just even a moral victory by getting a scoring chance. We've got seven minutes left in the third, and the Devils have fired exactly zero shots on goal in this period. Wow. Here's Yager now. Cross ice pass. Couldn't be settled down by Mario, and it's back out of the zone. Version it on. Yager the other way. He's trying to accomplish something at this point, maybe to take a positive into game four, Saturday afternoon on ABC. Positive, they can throw this one out the window. <laughs> right, no matter how badly you lose, it just counts as one loss. And I'm not sure if 3 nothing indicates how badly this has gone. No, no, you're exactly right about that. And a real good, solid road performance by the defending Stanley Cup champions. Shots 2-1 to one in favor of New Jersey. 32-16 for the game. And listen to the roar from the crowd. They're partying here in Pittsburgh. A hole shot on goal. The goal is able to drop that easy. Cast a cheer tonight from the Pittsburgh crowd. We've heard a couple of them for a variety of reasons around the boards. Madden breaks out. Two on one New Jersey. What else is new? With Pandolfo coming on and Hedberg made the save. I don't know how many times it is that Hedberg has just watched two to three New Jersey Devils coming at him. Hedberg the number one star even if they lose three nothing. Could you make a case? He's been that good. Yeah you, you can make the case. Absolutely you can. I think the entire New Jersey Devils, though, certainly deserve a lot of credit. I mean, the outman breaks, Steve, are 11 to 1 in a playoff game that's the series is tied at one apiece. It's mind boggling. But I will say this about the Penguins they make adjustments on the fly, and they've done a good job in this series, in game two, making adjustments on the fly. Long shot, hard, right in the bread basket of Johan Hedberg, and he covers that up. Might as well take us to break, Panger. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> The leader in that category, and Rodeur figures to inch a little closer. Keep the Penguins off the board for the next five minutes. Uh, his little boy Jonathan would be a happy camper with his, his goal pads and little goaltender. Huh? So much made of Rodeur's save percentage, and again, hasn't faced a whole lot of shots, so this ought to help him. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you about shots and save percentage. When you play for a team like the New Jersey Devils, and they don't give up much, if you only get four shots and one of them is a two-on-one and they score, you shape the to the offer. That's the fact of the matter. And that's what frustrates goaltenders like Marty that play on a team like this when he sees other goalies that get so much action all the time. Our Visa storyline, Brian Rafalski. And he's got two of his four previous goals have been game winners. This score holds up. They'll have another game-winning goal. And Elias Arnett and Sakura continue to be the bulk of that New Jersey offense. He's a storyline replays. Alexander McGillney buying some time and setting up Brian Rafalski. That quieted down this capacity crowd. Got even more hush there when Arnett fired that low blast to the stick side. And then here in the third period on an odd man break, yet another one. We have seen 11 of them for the New Jersey Devils. And Patrick Eliash has capped it off with that third goal of the game. He's got an eight-game point streak, the longest in Devils playoff history. Congratulations to Patrick Eliash. Peter Sikora not too far behind. He's got a seven-game point scoring streak. And that will carry into game number four. As the crowd, as you might expect, has thinned out just a bit here in Pittsburgh. Coming up on four minutes to play in the third. Hey, two on one. Nemchinov shot deflected away by Ian Moran. 
Another odd man break for New Jersey. So the goaltenders, Darren, you tell us years ago, hey, you know, goals against average isn't a great statistic. Can't go by that. Then it was save percentage was the hot statistic to really judge a goaltender. And now we really can't go by that either when you look at some teams. Well, I think you can you can base your final analysis on that and put that as your foundation. But I just think that there are hypotheticals involved. And I, I think with Martin Brodeur, the one thing that he has done time and time again is win hockey games. So, I mean, Grant Fear's theory was, hey, I don't care if I win 9-8. I could care less. I won the hockey game. And that is the bottom line. But I'm saying for save percentage in playoff time, when we really magnify the numbers, I just think there are some situations where, you know, you can't get that up if, if, if indeed, you only face 16 shots a game. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say that, and I'll back it up with something else. Marty Verdura hasn't been happy, entirely happy with the way he's played either. And, I mean, so his standards are higher than that. But uh, you don't want to get too carried away with that. If, if he's seen shots from the outside on every other goaltender, and their safe percentage is 95, but, you know, 20 of the 35 shots are, are from inside the blue line, there's a dramatic difference there. To further back up your point about the importance or lack of for save percentage, Rodeur's save percentage of all the goalies who played the bulk of their team's time in the playoffs, 16 teams, Rodeur was tied for 14th in save percentage. The only one behind him, Roman Chekmonik, of the plot. You keep in mind. So even with that safe percentage for Brodeur, here he is. And he's going to see his team up two games to one in the third round. So there lies the fact that it's somewhat misleading. Another shot. Madden, that one is stopped by Hedberg. 45 left here in the third. Off the referee. And right to Jans. I'll tell you this, the shots on Johan Hedberg in this game, he's given up three at 35 shots, so he's over 90%. They've been quality chances, I and mean, this could be an 8 nothing hockey game. The question begs to be asked, where's the desperation for Pittsburgh? Have they tried to open it up, and if they had, it's hard to tell. They're down 3-0. We've got 2.15 left in the third. They have one shot on goal in the third period, and that was a long one from just inside the red line. Here's Lemieux. Drop for Yager. Centering feed, Herdina couldn't get there. And Sakura on it. I think they just look like a tired hockey team. A team that's, that in this game has started the game out of gas. Baseball tonight is coming up next. That was an excuse they used in game number one, the Penguins did. A legitimate excuse. Absolutely. Not much time between games in a tough seven-game playoff series into overtime. And they bounce back with a big effort in game number two, and it just has not been here tonight in every facet for Pittsburgh except, again, they exclude the goaltender, Johan Hedberg, who's been fabulous. Moran, long shot. Mario Lemieux has said it throughout, throughout the playoffs. And Hedberg has kept them in every single game in the postseason, He's given them a chance to win. And he's done that same thing here tonight. Moran shot, stopped, Rakuter got the tip, and Brodeur made the save. All of a sudden, a flurry of activity around Martin Brodeur. Two shots in a row. Moran checked by them, Chinoff, Primo will get to it. Gomez can't handle, and it goes all the way down to the Devil's End. And then Rafalski, take his sweet time, let the seconds tick away. Johnson for Pittsburgh puts it in the devil bench. We get the whistle. We'll check back in with John Saunders. John, take it away. Steve, along with Barry Melrose, want to let you know that at 11.30 on ESPN2, it's the NHL tonight. We'll be talking about this guy. One of the greatest players in the NHL, a late-round pick, Chris Drury. What a playoff series he having. And, Darren, does that mean that Marty Boudreau would rather play for the Atlanta Thrashers? <laughs> No, I knew you, of all people, would come at me with that. I knew you would. You know, I, I'm, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying to get into something that's probably difficult to understand. I mean, my save percentage wasn't defenseman. my save percentage wasn't good, and I didn't win any games. So I have a good feel for the good guys in this game. But I do know one thing: I went from a team in junior, an expansion team, that we faced a bunch of shots, and everybody forgot about the bad goal I gave up. And I went to a great team and only had 15 shots a game. And every time I give up a goal, they knew about that goal. So. There are some certain qualities. And you know what? Actually, Barry, I'm going to answer that question. I'd love to see Marty Brodeur 
on a bad team for a year. And, and not, not, I'm not wishing anything bad on Martin Brodeur. I'm saying that I think we would appreciate how good of a goaltender Martin Brodeur is because he would be able to control and dominate. So Certainly did just that this season. Became only the third goalie in history to have three straight 40-win seasons. His fourth had a six consecutive 30-win season. The fourth goalie to do that. So he's got the numbers, two cups in his first seven seasons, and he's working on a third Stanley Cup in this his eighth NHL season. Madden will fake the shot and fire. Hedberg to save. 9.5 seconds left here in the third. And the Devils are going to go up two games to one in the series. I'll tell you, John Madden's been pretty darn good in this hockey game, and I know that the New Jersey Devils come out of this one here feeling pretty darn good about themselves. A lot of the fellas took in the ball game last night. Now they've got a, a day off here and get ready for our afternoon game on Saturday on ABC right here in Pittsburgh where Bill Clement and Gary Thorne and Brian Engblom will take over that broadcast. And yeah, the Pittsburgh fans ought to be happy to see them, huh? Penguin fans figure to be in a rather testy mood over the next couple of days. Watching their team blank at home. Martin Brodeur, his 11th playoff shutout, third this postseason. He ties Ed Belfort for seventh on the all-time list. Arnett Neliashi had a goal. Brian Rafalski, his third game-winning goal of the postseason. And Johan Hedberg, 33 saves for Pittsburgh. Every one of the Pittsburgh Penguin players went over to Johan Hedberg, the opposite side of where they exit the ice, and gave him a tap on the, on the head. And I'm sure that they said, sorry, partner, we let you down tonight. Pittsburgh is shut out for the first time in 90 home playoff games. Again, the final, the Devils win here in Pittsburgh, three to nothing. They go up two games to one in this series. The Western Conference Final resumes tomorrow night on ESPN at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. The Blues drive to even up their series with the Avs in Game 4. Coming up next, baseball tonight for a complete post-game roundup from Pittsburgh. Make sure to tune into NHL tonight, 11.30 Eastern, over on ESPN2. Tonight's game has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Darren Pang, Joe Miltoletti, and our entire crew. Thanks for watching. This is Steve Levy. John and Barry, take it away.